I'm going to read today from Luke chapter 7 and starting at verse 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who'd lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then he wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. I just realized I cannot read that. It is too small up there. Where have I got to on there? Forgave him, his debt's both small. She is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denario and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, you did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Father, we do thank you for your presence here with us. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and to teach us Comfort us, inform us, and stir your love for the Father in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're coming to the end of our series of Jesus by the Lake. We have this week and then next week. And for many, having read that story, it will be a very familiar incident um, to you. But I just want to make a comment on it. This actual incident is unique in Luke's Gospel. Matthew, Mark and John also recount a similar incident. But that incident happened just before Jesus died. And there are a number of differences between them. This took place in the house of a Pharisee. The dinner in Mark, Matthew, and John took place in the house of Simon the leper, who had presumably been healed by Jesus at some point, otherwise they wouldn't have gone there. This involves a sinful woman. The incident in the others revolve Mary, a devout disciple. In this incident, the woman wept. In the other one, There was no weeping of the woman. She poured perfume on Jesus' feet and then wiped off the excess. In In this one, Jesus rebukes the Pharisee. In the other one, he rebukes Judas Iscariot. Now, it's important because the stories probably in both our minds are the same one, but they are quite separate. This one today took place early in Jesus' ministry. The other one took place late. The second one, Mary was preparing Jesus for his burial. This incident reveals something about the kingdom of God 
um, that we will come to in a little bit later. So I just wanted to draw record. Some of you are thinking, I've got to go and check this. <laughs> You're thinking, is this true? It is. It is. I'm right in this. I'm not often very definite, but I know I'm right. <laughs> so what's been going on? As we've been looking at this story of the early ministry of Jesus, we've heard him announcing that a new kingdom is coming. God had chosen his people, Israel, to be the place where he, he demonstrated who he was in the world. But there was a new kingdom coming that was going to be worldwide. This old kingdom was a king, kingdom of keeping rules and regulations to reflect the holiness of God to the world. This new com kingdom coming was to be a people who were holy. So Jesus had been begun, had sort of announced this new kingdom. Then he began healing on the Sabbath, which really upset the relig religious leaders because you weren't meant to work on the Sabbath. He brought a new understanding of the Sabbath. What Sabbath was made for man. It was made so that we could rest and recuperate from the, from the daily tasks of life and to get, take time to give glory to God. It wasn't something that if we kept, we became more righteous. Then he started eating with anyone, which really upset the Pharisees. He claimed that the old was going to be fulfilled and that the new would replace the old. He was hinting that there was this new community of worldwide people, no longer restricted to just Israel, but people of every tribe, tongue, people and nation, as we will hear about later. And he is now about to demonstrate the depth and the breadth of the mercy of God. So whereas that, f that later incident prepared him for his burial, this one was to demonstrate the depth and the breadth of the mercy of God. So we're going to be looking at... Oh, just, oh I've done that there. The setting, the thoughts, the question, and the response. So the setting... <coughs> This Pharisee invited Jesus to come for a meal. Let's give you an idea of how they would be sitting. <coughs> Jesus didn't only eat with those who people perceived as being sinners and the tax collectors. He also ate with the posh, the wealthy, and the influential. He was able to be comfortable in both settings. So... <coughs> He went to this Pharisee's house. People would be reclining and uh, their feet would be sticking over the edge of the table. And when it was a posh person's house, it was not entirely uncommon for people to come in just to look to eat some of the leftovers. <laughs> Um, doors were open, so they'd come in and they'd probably sit on benches arranged around the wall. And they'd sort of wait for the meal to finish and then they'd take some leftovers. And into this comes a woman. Now, the interesting thing, one of the interesting things about this story is this is very open-ended. We don't know who this woman is. What we do know is she came specifically not to eat the leftovers, but to anoint Jesus. Because she heard Jesus was coming to this house for a meal, so she went and brought some perfume, and she took it to the meal where she knew Jesus would be. Now, we don't know what she knew about Jesus. We don't know her name. We know nothing. All we know is that somehow she had heard Jesus. And what he had said had touched her heart. And now she wanted to express that to her. The problem was this lady had a past. And the probability is that she was actually a prostitute at some point. 
And for a prostitute to come into a Pharisee's house was quite a, a sort of big jump for her. And it was certainly not approved of by the Pharisee. Then standing behind Jesus, she begins to weep. And she's weeping so much that her tears are beginning to wash the feet of Jesus. So she takes her long hair and she begins to wipe her tears off of Jesus. And then she comes and anoints his feet with perfume. Meanwhile, the Pharisee, who's called Simon, it's his house, knows the woman, knows her background. And he has a number of thoughts. He's clearly invited Jesus in to learn a little bit more. He must have heard of him, must have heard some of the things he was saying. And uh, so he's invited him for a meal, presumably to ask some questions. But now his honoured guest is having his feet washed by a prostitute and she is pouring perfume on his feet. And he's thinking, if this Jesus were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman that is. And if he knew what kind of woman she was, he would not be allowing her to touch him, to touch him. And these are the thoughts going through his head. So, I've learned something about Jesus. He's clearly not a prophet because he doesn't know who the woman is and he's allowing this woman to weep over him and pour perfume over him. And he's looking at the woman and he's looking at Jesus with a great element of judgment. Those were his thoughts. What he doesn't realize is that Jesus is a prophet and Jesus knows what kind of woman she is and he also knows what Simon is thinking. So while this is going on, Jesus says, Simon, I've got something to tell you. Simon almost certainly perked up at that point because here was the great teacher that he'd heard about, about to impart some great wisdom to his table and bring some honor to it, seeing as he brought quite a lot of dishonor by allowing this woman to weep over him. And he tells the story of two, two people one of them owes about two years' worth of salary, and the other owes about two months of salary. So there's quite a big difference in the amount of debt that each one of them owes. Jesus says to Simon, both of them are forgiven. The person they owe a debt to says to both of them, it's okay, you needn't pay. You needn't pay. And then he says to Simon, which one will love me more? Which one will love that person more? And Simon, quite rightfully, says, well, the one that's been forgiven the bigger debt, he's the one who will love more. And then Jesus turns to Simon. Simon had invited Jesus to come and have a meal. But he had neglected the basic hospitality. In those settings in those days, they would have expected water to wash their feet because they would have been very sandy. And, and Jesus says to Simon, when I came in, you gave no water for my feet. You didn't even greet me 
with a kiss. And you didn't put any oil on my head. The welcome had been cold, patronizing, even discourteous. Simon had clearly invited Jesus in to question him a little bit, but was uncertain about how much honor to give. Leslie and I went to a mixed family um, gathering one day, and we knew that there were some people there from a different culture who almost certainly didn't like us. Um, and when they came in, it was very interesting because they didn't realize how much Leslie and I had traveled. So when they came in, the first thing they did was put out their left hands and shook my left hand. Now, I knew what they were demonstrating to the rest of their family was we reject this couple. To shake by the left hand is incredibly dishonoring. And then they managed to scoot around Leslie completely. And what they demonstrated was, we're here, we're going to be all smiles, but this couple do not belong to us in any way. Fortunately, I don't take offense easy, but I did have to have a laugh because I knew that they didn't know that we knew that. <coughs> Which did mean I deliberately spoke to him <laughs> just for the fun of it. And Jesus is saying, Simon, where was your welcome? Where was your welcome? Because look at what this woman has done for me. She has poured her tears onto my feet and she has washed my feet. She has poured perfume over my feet. She has not stopped kissing me and my feet. This woman has welcomed me Sinner though she is, outcast though she is, though you stand in judgment over her, she has poured love and affection over me. Whereas your welcome was cold, patronizing, discourteous. And then Jesus says something quite staggering. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. What Jesus says here is this woman who you, Simon, see as so sinful, God has accepted, and she knows it. And he doesn't say her sins are forgiven because of what she's done for me. He says her sins are forgiven, and that is evident by the love she has shown me. What he is saying is somewhere before this incident, before she entered the Pharisee's house, she had met in some way with the words of Jesus and God had forgiven her. She had opened her heart and recognized she was a sinful woman. She was a woman who was unacceptable before God and there was no way that she could get into the kingdom of God. But God had spoken to her and said, no, I'm going to forgive you. And so out of that forgiveness, she hears that Jesus, who she knows is the one who forgives sins, she comes to him and pours out her love and her affection and her devotion to him, saying, I have been forgiven, I love you, I will wash your feet, I will get expensive perfume, I will pour it over your feet, I will express my love because of what you have done for me. And Jesus' response is this. 
he, turn, he says to her, <coughs> your sins are forgiven. He affirms to her that what she had felt of forgiveness had in reality happened back in the past and once and for all, the way it is written. <coughs> the other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? It's interesting, they didn't ask whether Jesus could forgive sins. There's an assumption in this that he does. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And what you have <coughs> is the parallel of someone who felt the way to God was by obeying the rules, separating themselves from life, separating themselves from those who were ungodly, those who they perceived weren't, weren't good people, those they perceived might be under the judgment of God, those who, who they perceived as being outside of the people of Israel. And they separated themselves. And they felt, yes, <clears throat> I only have to do the good things. I have to keep the Sabbath. I have to tithe everything that I have, my mint, my come in, all that lot. I have these 613 commands that I need to obey. And as long as I'm obeying these things, then I am all right. But as God would say to the people of Israel so often, you've got all this law, but you have forgotten love and mercy. The woman knew she was forgiven. The other day, <coughs> I was uh, meant to visit um, some people in the house. And I deliberately didn't take my phone, because sometimes the phone is a nuisance, believe it or not. And uh, it's good to leave it at home sometimes. So I go to their house, and uh, I knock on the door. And I knock on the door. And I knock on the door, and I finally make the decision, I got the date wrong. So I drove back home, and I say to Leslie, who's sitting at home, has my phone rung? And she said, it did make a noise. So I went, picked up my phone, and it was from the people. Have you forgotten about tonight? <laughs> so I rang about and said, no, but I've been at your door knocking, and you've not let me in. <laughs> And so I drove back, and this time they were ready for me. And the reason they didn't hear was because they were in the kitchen, and they had the extractor fan on, and that was louder than my knocking. Jesus is constantly knocking at our door. And it may be you're here today, and you're thinking... I have no idea who this Jesus is. I know there's something inside me that is crying out to know God, but I don't know how to do it. But the noise of this world, the noise of activity, the noise of work, the noise of social media, the noise of distraction, prevents you from hearing the knocking of Jesus at the door, saying, I can come and bring you the forgiveness. Because one of the things this story shows us is that there were people that thought they were good and maybe they felt they needed to be forgiven a little. And there are people that feel they need to be given a lot forgiven a lot but how we receive forgiveness whether we feel it's a little or a lot is exactly the same it is through Jesus through his death resurrection his ascension into heaven and his life we can receive forgiveness when we ask for it 
and that is open every day of the week 24 7 and it may be that Jesus has been knocking at your door <coughs> but you've just pushed him out or you've just been too busy to hear him but this woman was so so aware of everything that she'd been forgiven that she went to a house of a place a house where she knew she would be rejected but she went and found Jesus and poured out her love on Jesus we live in a very busy world and most of us in this room are very good churchgoers and we love Jesus but my question today for each one of us is do we understand how much we've been forgiven do we feel we have been forgiven and out of that forgiveness are we demonstrating our love for Jesus by being part of his kingdom part of his church and proclaiming that kingdom wherever we go my application for this morning is what are we going to do about it Jesus we thank you so much for the love that you have shown to us we are so aware that the dirt of this world so easily and quickly accumulates at our feet when Peter felt like that he came to you and said look Lord wash me all over wash me all over and you said no Peter it's only your feet that need washing and I ask you this morning that you will wash our feet again I pray for anyone who doesn't know you who isn't aware of you that you will come now and speak into their hearts but Lord I ask you come and wash us and come and fill us with the love that this woman had for you let our obedience to you be ever increasingly out of our love for you may our works of service stir from our love for you may all may the way that we look at the world around us be tinged with your love for us may our forgiveness of others come out of your forgiveness for us father I ask you to open the eyes of our heart afresh to see what you have accomplished for us Holy Spirit I ask you to come come now Come and bring encouragement. Come and bring health to our bodies. Come and bring revelation of how much you have loved each one of us. Come and give us insight as we reflect on this, sto this account of this woman came into the into the home of a Pharisee who judged her came and to some degree embarrassed herself as she wept before Jesus washed his feet with her hair poured expensive perfume on his feet all at a cost to herself 
and all because she knew that you had forgiven her. Come and stir your love in our hearts, Father. What I'd like us to do is to sit in relative silence and just contemplate the love that Jesus has for us. And we'll do that for what for many of us will be an embarrassing three minutes. But bring your mind into action how much Jesus has loved you.